This is the last vocab review for research methods. This will be part four. It's page 37 through 46 on the Myers for AP Psychology. We're talking basically about statistics here. So just some very basic statistics. Jumping right in. Um, jumping right in, we've got nominal data, ordinal data, interval data, and ratio data. These are different types of data. This isn't in the book. so. You should pay attention to this. Um, nominal data would be, so when we're looking at different types of data, data is just numbers or things that we find in our research. When we're looking at different uh, types of data that we get, we, we have to classify them into one of these four categories. Nominal data is just answers to a question or just responses. So yes, no questions are nominal data. Um, if I say, which do you like better, chocolate, pistachio, or vanilla ice cream? That's nominal data. It's just an answer, one response. The response doesn't mean there's no rank order. It's just one response. Um, ordinal data would be put your, putting certain things in order. Ordinal order. Ordinal order. So put your five favorite football players in order. Put uh, your favorite foods in order. Put which of these pictures you think is most attractive in order. So it's the order of things. So there is a there's a number one and there's a number five or ten or whatever you got and they go in order. <clears throat> Interval data is where there's an your data is going to be between zero and some other number. So maybe 152. Um, weight is an example of interval data because weight has a zero point. You're zero pounds if you have nothing there. So there's, a, there's an actual zero point in weight. Ordinal data, there's no zero because you're putting things in order. Nominal data, there's no zero because you're just picking things. Interval data, there is a zero. So it's like, yeah, how well does this exercise plan um, affect your weight? That would be interval data because you would be measuring the weight of the person afterwards. Ratio data is similar to interval data except zero is not. It's just, it's just another number. It's not anything special. Um, for instance, temperature is an example of interval data. Zero degrees uh, Fahrenheit does not mean that there is no temperature. It just means that you are 32 degrees below freezing Fahrenheit. So ratio data is just like interval, except zero and in interval is the lowest point you can be. Zero in ratio isn't the lowest point. It'll be some other point on there. All right, moving on. Um, these right here are called measures of central tendency you need to remember that these are called uh, measures of central tendency All right, you're probably going to get questions about something like that these aren't that hard to understand but sometimes when you throw in this measures of central tendency people get confused so whenever you see the word central tendency you're talking about the three m's mean, median, mode. Basically what the, all these are telling you is where should the midpoint be? Where should the middle group be? And so it's going to tell you get points to that direction. That's why it's called measures of central tendency because the mean, median, and mode all point to that. The mode is the most common response or the most common number that you get. So if I have a number set that is 1, 5, 2, 3, 6, 12, 15 and uh, 21 and let's throw in another one right here um, the mode would be one because it's mentioned twice no other number is mentioned more than once so your mode in this case would be I'm sorry modes it's measured twice but your mode would be one um, your median is the absolute middle it's so the middle number of all of these. So you take them all, you rank order them, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, all the way to 21. And whichever number lands in the middle is your median. Think of a median like the median on a road, the thing that's in the middle. It's called a median. If it's separating the traffic, that's right in the middle of the road. That's how I remember median. So we got 1, 1, 2, 3. So the median here is going to be probably 6. I might be wrong, but I'm just doing this in my head real quick. So the mean is probably, I think it's six here. So whatever the middle number is, if we put them all in order. The mean is what you've been doing since you were in fourth grade. That's add them all together, divide by the total number of numbers. So if you have one, two, 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Take all 9, add them together, divide by 9. That's going to be your mean. Means the average. All right, this is the average. This is the absolute middle. Absolute middle. And mode is the most common. All right, your range is just what what your lowest number is and what your highest number is. So the range here is between 1 and 21. So the range is 1 and 21. So whatever question I was answering or asking, the answers are going to be somewhere between 1 and 21. Range just tells you what you're looking at. What could be the lowest, what could be the highest. All right, so all these, again, measures of central tendency, they're all pointing to what the middle number is, right? The median tells you uh, the average, which kind of tells you what gives you an idea of what the middle number is. The median tells you exactly what the middle number is, but it doesn't necessarily tell you um, if that middle number is um, important or not for, for different questions. The mode is the one that is um, just the most common answer, okay? Moving on, now we get a little bit more difficult. The only like, <clears throat> non-basic thing that we need to learn about in psychology is what's called, um, well, it's not even that basic, but standard deviation. The standard deviation is the distance from the mean. The distance from the mean. So standard deviation um, we take a data set, so it's, if we went back and we, you know, we had our 1, 1, 3, 5, and I'm putting these in order, 7, 13, 15, right? And this, there's a big range here because now I got one that was 30, right? So there's a big range. So if you have these numbers that are really spread out, your standard deviation is going to be higher. The more spread out these numbers are, the more variation you have, the higher your standard deviation is going to be. It's going to say... Um, it's going to be higher. If it was more like 1, 1, 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. They both have 8 numbers in them, but this one's going to have a lower standard deviation because they deviate. They deviate from the middle, whatever the middle is going to be on this, much less than this one's going to be. So when we're looking at standard deviations, bigger standard deviation means there's a bigger difference right there. Now, one thing that we want to look at, and we'll go back to standard deviation here in a moment, is the normal curve. A normal curve is what we call a bell-shaped curve. Okay, If we're looking at a graph, it's going to say that 68% 68% of all responses are going to fall within one standard deviation of the mean. So there's going to be 68% going to be within one. Whether that standard deviation is 2, whether that standard deviation is 500. And remember, we, how do we find the standard deviation? We take them all up and we fight, figure out what's the difference from the mean. But 68% is going to be between there. And then we go with two standard deviations, right? Two standard deviations. And we're, we're looking at 96% approximately is going to be within two standard deviations. These two numbers you do need to know. You definitely need to know there's 96% between two standard deviations and 68% between one standard deviation. And the standard deviation is the difference or the uh, variation from the mean. Variation from the mean. Um, a normal curve is the one that looks like a perfect bell. It's normal. That means your mean what a normal curve would be, what it would tell us, is right there at that point, the mean, what we just talked about, the median, and the mode are all at the same exact, are the exact same number. So standard deviation has the mean, median, and mode all at the same number. If they're not all the same, then we have what's called a skew. A skew means that it's going to look like this. Either it's going to be like this, with a long tail over here, or it's going to look like this with a long tail over here. The way you tell whether this is positive or negative is you look at which way the tail is pointing. Look at the tail. The tail tells. So if the tail 
is over here in negative land. So imagine a number line when you were from like third grade, right? Imagine a number line. To the left is lower numbers than to the right. If the tail is over here in negative land, then this is a negative skew. If the tail is over here in positive land, then this is a positive skew. Um, sometimes we get these confused because the humps are not where we think they should be. So we think that since the humps over here in positive, it's positive skew. But we're not looking at the humps, we're looking at the tail. The tail tails. So remember that about skews. So these occur when there's the mean, median, mode aren't all in the same spot. And I think we got one more thing. Um, last thing is when we're when we find out if there's an observed difference that's reliable, um, we look at three different things, and this kind of helps us tell if we see something that's different. So all these statistics are telling us mean, median, mode, standard deviation. They're telling us whether or not the difference that we found is, they're helping tell us whether or not the difference that we found is something that we care about. So we saw a difference, but who cares? Um, when we want to find out who cares, we ask ourselves these three questions, and these can help us. We also run these more advanced statistical analysis, which we don't have to know about for AP psychology, but which if you take an advanced psychology class, you'll learn about z-scores, etc. cetera. And um, when, we just, when we just want an idea, we say representative samples are better, so if you get a representative sample, chances are going up that your difference is reliable. That you're, if you have more cases, if you did a, a bunch of them, a bunch of tests, chances are your differences are looking like they're more significant. If there's less variable, less variable observations are more reliable. So if you have only one variable that you're working with, it's more reliable than if you're working with like five different variables. So you want to these kind of just give us an idea of what's going on. We have to run more advanced statistics to figure out for sure if stuff's going on, which we don't really need to worry about for this class, but this will help us. Um, hopefully that helps for this last part of Unit 2 in the Myers text, Research Methods, and we'll talk to you next time.